Hello, I'm Aaron Park, and this is 7th grade, lesson 29. So for our first problem, Jackson's pants were k feet long. He cut 25% from the bottom of his pants, and now they fit perfectly. The expression k minus 25% of k represents the new length of Jackson's pants, which expression also represents the new length of pants. So just like the past couple of worksheets, we'll be working with percentages. Number one is just like some of the past worksheets, so you can review those if you need more help. But let's walk through this. What is 25% in decimal form? Well, hopefully you're familiar with converting from percentages to decimals, but you can basically think about it since 100% is one. One item is 100% items. All we need to do is move the decimal point left twice. So 25% is the decimal point 25, which is the fraction 1 fourth. And that should make sense. 25% is a fourth of something, which is 0.25. With that out of the way, let's look at what happens if we plug in the decimal for here. k minus 0.25k equals what? Well, it has to be k, since the coefficients, sorry, the bases are the same. They're both k. Now, if we subtract 0.25k from 1k, because remember, even if there's no number here, that just means it's 1, how much are we left with? How much k? And of course, the answer is 0.75, or k minus 1 over 4k, if you like fractions better, equals 3 fourths k, which is 0.75k. Which expression is equivalent to the sentence below? n is increased by 200%. Now, n is increased by 200% can also be written as n is increased by 2. And this is not times 2, it is by 200%. The language can be a bit tricky at times, but basically, when you see that something is increased by a value, you're adding. However, if it's said by a factor of 2, that means you're multiplying. For instance, if this said n is increased by a factor of 200%, factor should remind you of factorization or finding the factors of a number, basically multiplication and division, right? Then we would think, oh, so n times 2, which is, of course, 2n, and that would be a. But it doesn't say a factor of, it just says by 200%. So n is increased by 200%, plus 200%. But it's not just 200%, it's 200% of something. And in this case, it's plus 200% n, which is plus 2n. And n plus 2n is 3n. Now, The expression 4t plus 8c represents the total number of vertices of t tetrahedrons and c cubes, which expression also represents the total number of their vertices. Here we're going to be factoring out a 4, because that is the common factor. 4t plus 8c. When we factor out, we're basically looking to see what we can divide from both of these terms. If we divide by 4, these cancel, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we're basically left with this, 2c, which is c. A six-pack of soda costs $12.90. What was the price of one bottle of soda? Well, we're given the total price. We're given how many items are in the pack. So now let's find one pack, one bottle, I mean. 
it costs twelve dollars and ninety cents for six sodas. Now, how much is it for one soda? X dollars. X is already isolated because a number over one is just itself. So all we need to do is divide. Let's practice our long division. Luckily, the numbers are very easy. They're all, it's going to divide very neatly. 12 is a multiple of 2. So there's nothing left. We bring down the 9. 9 is a multiple of 3. And 6 is a multiple of 3. But 9 is not a multiple of 6, sadly. So we're going to be left with 3. But we bring down the 0. And 30 is a multiple of 6. So our final answer is $2.00. And 15 cents which is a now right 0.16 is a fraction in lowest terms first let's think about what a decimal is decimal is kind of like something out of a hundred because instead of 4 over 7 or whatever 0.16 what is it what's another way to say that well we learned that this is the tenth place and this is the hundredth place with a th so this is 16 hundredths, or 16 over 100. Now, we just need to simplify. We will note that both 16 and 100 are divisible by 4. If you don't see that, you can simply prime factorize. And you'll note that 16 looks like this, and 100, 4, 25, 5, 5, and I would break this up, but we don't need to. We can see that they share a common factor, 4. So let's divide both sides, both top and bottom, by 4. We get 4 over 25. And then they don't share any more common factors. So this is the simplest it can be, which is C. Now, let's head on over to this last page, which is about exponents. In this case, we are dividing. Another exponent rule that we must learn for this, to solve these types of problems, to simplify, is we learned previously that when you multiply like so, so the same base, different exponents, you can simplify like this. You basically write the base with the sum of the exponents. So for example, x to the power of 2, times x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. Now, if you remember, a negative exponent to the negative n can be rewritten as a fraction where it moves to the other side. So, when we have something like this, a fraction, we should be able to rewrite it as this. This moves over, we multiply the exponent by negative 1, and we get this. Then, using a rule from above, we will get a minus m. Now that we've proven that, we can skip this middle step and just go straight here. This is another exponent rule. When two things of the same base are being divided, then you can simplify it by subtracting the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. So let's practice. Here we have 5 to the power of 6 over 5 to the power of 2. The base is 5 for both numerator and denominator. So we can use our rule 5 to the power of 6 minus 2 because 6 from the numerator, 2 from the denominator which is 5 to the power of 4. And that would be our correct answer. Do the same for the rest of these problems. Thank you.